So this video is for the Waves Diffraction Worksheet. Um, it's number two of two for videos, solution videos for the tail end of wave phenomena. Uh, the first one was standing waves resonance and some diffraction, and now this guy is all diffraction. There are 13 uh, problems in this worksheet, so we'll look at the whole thing. Um, it should go quick because it's all one theme. It's probably rather repetitive, but let's take a look. So here's the worksheet. Oops, here's the worksheet. Scrolling upwards, that's the first page. Here is seven through 12 or 13. Uh, here's 13, all by its lonesome. Um, and yeah, the point of that is so that if uh, you wanna refer back to the actual worksheet, there it is. So let's take it from the top. First of all, what the heck is diffraction? So. If you have a wave and it hits a barrier, so it hits a wall, it reflects off the wall. Um, and if it doesn't hit a wall, it keeps going, duh. But um, what happens with diffraction, and actually let me just explain this before we even get into the first guy. So yeah, like I said, if I have water waves coming in from the left going this way, and they hit the wall, they just reflect back the way they came. Um, and then if there is no wall, these waves will just keep on going as if nothing happened. But the deal with diffraction is what happens in this area right here. The waves don't just get cut off by the wall. The reason why that's true is something called the Huygens Principle. You don't really need to know this, but I might as well tell you. The thing is, is that each, if you have a, a, what's called a plane wave, a flat wave, that's considered to be like a line of infinite circular wave fronts which is a kind of weird, but if you keep on overlapping circles over and over and over and over, eventually what you get is a line. Um, but what happens is that if you cut off that line at the end, that last point where you cut it off is still making semicircular wave fronts. So I'm talking about like this point right, come on yellow, this point, stop it, this point right here. So that guy is still making semicircular wave fronts, so what happens when the wave gets cut off right there is it's not like, like oh, here's waves and here there's nothing and, oh, well, whatever, um, but rather uh, semicircular wave fronts develop. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let me just retrace those wave fronts a little bit. Um, and what happens is that at this point right here, these waves keep going forward, but then you have wrapping around the barrier so that the waves wind up spreading out just like that. And then if instead of a wall, if you actually have a second wall that with like a gap in it, then what happens is that you have wrapping around both of those edges. And so some waves go this way, some waves go that way. And you wind up going from flat wave fronts to semicircular wave fronts. And you get the biggest effect, the biggest change from flat plane waves to semicircular waves, the closer the opening is the closer the gap is to the wavelength of the wave. So from one crest to another, um, the closer this gap is to the wavelength of the waves, the more effect you get in terms of the wrapping around uh, the opening. And this drawing shows if the size of the opening is large relative to the wavelengths, then you still get the, the wrapping around you know, at the walls, but you don't really get semicircular waves. They're a little bit rounded off, but they're still kind of flat plane waves. So you get the most diffraction effect the closer the size of the opening is to the wavelength of the waves. A good example of this was in the previous video talking about sound. The wavelength of most sound waves is close to the size of windows and doors, so sound can wrap around, can diffract around windows and doorways uh, pretty easily but light, not so much. Visible light does not, because visible light is a very short wavelength. But radio waves like cell phone signals and Wi-Fi has a long, they have long wavelengths, like on the order of like a meter or a centimeter size, like tens or, or tens of, of centimeters. Um, and so they're close, they are closer to the sizes of doorways and windows. So a cell phone signal or a Wi-Fi signal can hit a doorway or a window and diffract around it and enter a room, whereas visible light will not. Um, so if you see sunlight, visible sunlight coming through a window, 
it gets cut off by the window and you actually see the shape, the square shape of the window as it projects upon the floor or the wall because those light beams don't diffract much. They do spread a little bit, um, but, they, uh, but they don't really diffract much at all. Um, but longer wavelength radio waves will and sound will as well because the size of the opening being the doorway or the window is close to the size of the wavelength of the wave. Okay, I just wanted to explain that. Now let's take a look at the problems. All right, first question. Wave of constant wavelength diffracts as it passes through an opening. If the size of the opening is increased, the diffraction effects will decrease. Um, it doesn't say if the opening is the same size as the wavelength, but if the opening size is getting bigger and the wavelength is not, then yeah, it's not, I mean, as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it's going to be moving away from the size of the wavelength of the wave. So the diffraction effects are going to uh, decrease. I wish this question actually said that the original opening size is close in size to the wavelength of the wave. <clears throat> because technically, I guess you could have a very small opening with a large wavelength, and then if the opening size gets bigger to match the wavelength, then the, the diffraction effects would actually increase. But I don't think that's what they're getting at here. Um, typically, the way they answer the, ask this question is that large openings do not show a lot of diffraction effects, and that's what they're getting at, that as the opening size gets bigger, um, then the opening size moves away from the size of the wavelength, and so you get less diffraction. So this guy's going to be decreased, choice one. Number two, uh, point P is on the right side of the wall. It looks like the wave is not going to get there because the wall's in the way, but we know from our study of diffraction that the waves will spread around that wall um, and they will spread out and they will hit point P because of diffraction. If you guessed diffraction because this worksheet is all about diffraction, that would be a good guess. So two is choice for diffraction. What a shock. So number three says, uh, how could you hear a ref's whistle in an open field even if you are behind the ref? Um, and Doppler effect is going to, if there's relative motion between you and the referee, you would change the pitch of the whistle. That's not what they're getting at. Um, reflection, and now I could see somebody being like, oh, the, whiff, the whistle reflects off a wall and then you can hear it. It's an open field, so there's nothing to reflect off of. So it's not reflection. And then refraction, <clears throat> that happens with light. Um, as light enters, goes from one medium to another. And other waves, too, actually go from one medium to another. But it's an open field filled with air, and so there's no refraction happening. It's diffraction. The sound wave um, is actually going to diffract around the ref himself um, and spread out behind the referee. So if you're standing behind the ref, you would hear the sound anyway. Um, you would think that technically the body of the referee should block the sound and you should hear nothing, but... The sound does actually diffract around the referee, him or herself, and uh, so diffraction allows you to hear the sound. That's an interesting question. So three is one diffraction. I mean, you could say, like, of course the answer is diffraction. All these questions are about diffraction. Like, okay, fine, I get it. But um, if this were a regions exam, and that was, like, question number 65 on the regions exam, well, it would, it's multiple choice, so maybe 45, whatever. Um, and it's among many other questions, it wouldn't be so easy, and it wouldn't. Um, so anyway, so three is one, moving on to number four. Four is a good question, it wants to know how much diffraction you get. We know that you get the most diffraction effect when the size of the opening in the, or the gap in the wall is close to the wavelength of the wave, so diffraction effect depends on the wavelength of the wave and the size of the opening. Five. Five is not multiple choice. It wants you to sketch the wave fronts when they're on the other side of the wall. This is a classic diffraction question, but there are actually two things you have to pay attention to. Um, I've seen people do this before. Um, the semicircular wave fronts is, is common. People usually remember that, but people mess up the wavelength. So let me show you a common wrong answer and then the right answer. So here come the waves coming from the left. They hit that opening and they're going to diffract on the other side. Um, actually, let me make that opening smaller. 
that's a little closer to what's on the page. Um, so here is what a lot of people do. The semicircular wavefront is true, but then they stack up the waves as if the wavelength changes. Here's a common wrong answer. I see that a lot, where people draw the semicircles, but the spacing between the wavefronts matters. That spacing is the wavelength. And the wavelength is not going to change because the speed didn't change, the frequency didn't change. Um, since it, speed doesn't, frequency doesn't change unless Doppler effect occurs, and that's not happening here. Speed's not going to change because the medium is the change. V equals F lambda, so if V and F don't change, then wavelength does not change either. And so the spacing needs to remain the same. So let me show you what it should look like. Something like that. Um, you want to make sure that the spacing from wave to wave, that wavelength, is about the same spacing as the original waves were to start. doesn't have to be exact, but it should be close. Um, notice that this spacing here is closer to the original, what I said, the most common wrong answer, where all the waves were stacked up on each other as if the wavelength changed. The wavelength won't change, um, but they will spread out on the other side of the barrier. Also, make sure that you read carefully. It does say four wavefronts, so if it asks for four, make sure you draw four. Number six, another diffraction question. What a shock. Here come the waves from the left. They hit that gap, and then they spread out going that way. So that is the correct answer, choice four. Uh, be careful. Um, don't pick choice three. The pattern looks right, but the waves are moving inward. Like, I don't... Why would they be coming in from the right like that? I don't, that doesn't make sense. Um, two doesn't happen, you know, as if it's some kind of focused lens situation. Uh, no. And one, I don't know what they're really even showing there. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be choice four. Waves spread out on the right side of the barrier. Next. So, I don't really, number seven, I don't really like this question. Um, I, I would love to know what regions exam this was actually on. The answer is choice three, long wavelength and narrow opening. Um, but I don't really like it um, because I think you do get a little bit more diffraction effect if the opening is not just close to the wavelength but even smaller than the wavelength of the wave. So a long wavelength and a narrow opening would technically give the greatest uh, diffraction effect um, but I think a good rule of thumb is to just remember that if the wavelength size and the gap size are the same size, even if the gap is smaller, you get the greatest diffraction effect. So, um, you know, it's kind of like you'd be like, well, if the gap size and the, op and the wavelength are the same, then it could be choice one or it could be choice four. But it's really choice three. I, I don't like this question at all. We're just going to move on. It's not really a great question either because you have to know that light um, has a uh, very short wavelength typically, but it doesn't, it says monochromatic. Monochromatic means one color and it implies that it's visible light. Um, I mean, monochromatic is visible light. They use that word for visible light because chromatic means colors with one color. They don't refer to monochromatic radio waves or monochromatic microwaves. They say monochromatic visible light, so it's one color. And if it's in the visible light range, then you want an opening that is on the order of visible light. Um, and visible light is in the like hundreds of nanometers. And so basically you want the smallest gap possible. Um, and so that small gap of 0.2 millimeters for A would, would cause the greatest diffraction because it's closest to the wavelength of the light. I still think that the wavelength of visible light is much smaller than 0.2 millimeters, but that is the, the closest to the wavelength. So A, uh, 8 would be choice 1A. So 9 is an interesting question. It says radio waves diffract around buildings more than light waves do. First of all, where are they getting these questions? Radio is a kind of light. So when they say light waves, what they mean is uh, visible light waves. Um, but radio is a light wave, so that's I would I would have written the question differently. But anyway, they're talking about radio waves and visible light waves. And they said radio waves diffract around buildings more than visible light waves do because the size of a building is close to the size of a radio wave. You're going to get diffraction 
uh, more diffraction when the size of the object or barrier or whatever or gap is close to the wavelength of what you're dealing with. For a building, that's close to radio wave wavelength. Um, visible light wavelength is way smaller than, than the size of buildings. So even though visible light waves do diffract around buildings and through windows and through doorways, it's practically not measurable, the effect. But radio waves, for sure. So it's a question, the size of the object needs to be close to the size of the wavelength. It's a wavelength thing, nine is choice four. Number 10, I like this question, it says waves pass through a 10 centimeter opening, but they don't get diffracted. Um, it says, what, why not? Well, actually they are diffracted. Um, they're gonna, any wave passing through a barrier will diffract uh, around the edges, but basically what it's getting at is that the diffraction is, you can't measure it, it's so, so small. And if that's the case, then the opening size must, must be much larger than the wavelength of the wave. So if the opening is 10 centimeters and you're not really seeing any diffraction, um, then that means that the wavelength must be much smaller, much shorter than 10 centimeters. And so 10 is choice one, much shorter than 10 centimeters. There's only 13 problems, so we're almost done. Spreading of a wave into the region behind it is called, oh, I don't know. Let's see, what this, what's this whole worksheet about? Yeah, diffraction, next. I remember this question. I don't remember. This is number 12. I don't remember what regions it was exactly. Um, but so many people put choice two. Um, I mean, some people put choice one, but the or like one or two, but they're not equivalent. They're not the same. And that's what I said before. Even though with diffraction, the waves are going to spread behind the barrier, they need to have the same wavelength. The wavelength will not change. Um, because the speed won't change because it's still the same medium, the frequency won't change because that only changes by Doppler effect, the V doesn't change and F doesn't change, V equals F lambda, lambda won't change either. So if the wavelength started at 1.4 centimeters, as you can see in the picture, it will stay as 1.4 centimeters, and so it's choice one. And then finally, number 13 is practically identical to number five, except on 13, they want three wave fronts, not four. And there you have it. Um, keeping in mind that the wavelength of the waves on the right side should be roughly the same as the wavelength of the waves on the left side. Um, don't stack them up too much. Um, don't do this. I think if you were like to stack them up too much so that they're too close together, that would be wrong. Let's get rid of those. There we go. That's our picture right there. All right, uh, I seem to be ending all of my videos with some kind of picture. Um, I can't really think of anything. Um, I can tell you that today is Saturday the 11th, tomorrow is, is Mother's Day, and my daughter and I baked a cake for my wife. It's a secret, so I'm whispering. Um, so I will draw you a picture of a Mother's Day cake. So yeah, there's your Mother's Day cake. Uh, make sure you go and thank your mom for being mom or thank uh, whomever um, if you don't want to thank your mom. You should thank your mom. Your mom puts up with you. Um, <laughs> so anyway, all right, um, look at that. I, I messed this up. Now I have two purples up here. Oh man, yeah, my OCD is not gonna I'll like that. Okay, there we go, That that's better. All right, um, we'll end on 19 minutes right now okay goodbye